Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless john 15 18 through 20 if the world hates you you know that it hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love its own yet because you're not of the world but i chose you out of the world therefore the world hates you remember the word that i said to you a servant is not greater than his master if they persecuted me they will also persecute you. In 2008, a homeschooling family fled persecution in Germany and found temporary asylum right here in the United States. Now, after 15 years, this fa family is facing imminent deportation. Last month, immigration officials told them their status has been revoked and they have to leave the country by October 11th. Germany has some of the harshest punishments for homeschooling in the world. So when Uva and Hanalora Romaika decided in 2006 that God was calling them to homeschool their five children, the German government levied fines greater than the family's income. But the Romaikas could see that public school was damaging their children. Fights at school, pressure, bullying. The Romaikas fled Germany in 2008, seeking asylum in the United States. After a series of legal battles, their asylum request was denied. But in 2013, the Obama administration granted them indefinite deferred action status they could stay in the U.S. They settled in eastern Tennessee, where Uva works as a piano teacher, piano tuner, and performs at a local university. Then on September 6th this year, the Romaikas were told their deferred status had been revoked, and they had four weeks to obtain German passports and leave the country. The Romaikas had no prior warning of the deportation order and were offered no explanation except that there had been a change of orders. Over the past 15 years, the Romaikas have become a thoroughly American family. I don't identify myself much as a German anymore. Now they face the prospect of their family being ripped apart and essentially dropped off in a German city to suddenly start over. We would land on a German airport without a place to live, without work. Uva and Hanalora told us they do not believe the deportation order is God's will. I try to discern, is this from the Lord? Then I will submit. He knows I follow Jesus and I have given my life to him. And when he asks us to leave, I'm ready. But is, this, is it the devil? Then I have to resist. I have to stand against it. Kevin Bowden, an attorney at the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, is not sure what will happen when the Romaikas meet with immigration and customs enforcement officers on October 11. Worst case scenario, of course, they could take them into custody and say, you don't have what you need or you have travel documents. We're going to take you into custody and buy you tickets and get you out of here. It's possible that they set this out for another four weeks and say, come back in four weeks and show us plane tickets that you've bought to get out of here. Or it's possible they say, come back in 12 months and, um, you know, live your life. U.S. Congresswoman Diana Harshbarger has filed a House bill that would create a path to citizenship for the Romaikas through green card status. There's hope for a Senate bill as well. The Biden administration could also intervene and order immigration officials to reinstate their deferred status. We asked ICE who ordered the deportation and why. They did not respond directly, but in a general statement said, ICE conducts removals of individuals without a lawful basis to remain in the United States, including at the order of immigration judges with the Justice Department's Executive Office for Immigration Review. The Romaikas say the matter is in the Lord's hands, but whatever happens, they say their family will stick together. I mean, we pray that God will uh, intervene and make a way where we right now don't see a way. His word is steady 
and is a rock and we can stand on it. And so I know he is fighting on our behalf. I just pray and believe that God will keep us together. Now to what may be yet another disturbing aspect of the Democrats' immigration scheme. As, as the Democrats are flinging open the border to migrants from countries like Venezuela, could they be discriminating against others from Western Europe who actually have legitimate grounds for asylum? Well, consider this case of the German couple who left their homeland 15 years ago after being fined for homeschooling their children. Yeah, homeschooling is a crime there. Well, the Ramaki family says that police dragged their children out of their home and forced them into a school. So the parents were worried they were going to lose custody, and they fled to the United States seeking asylum. In 2014, after legal proceedings, they said they were given the okay by officials here to remain. But then earlier this month, they got a call from immigration officials basically telling them to pack their bags and get ready to leave. Great to see both of you. Uva, I understand that you have two weeks to return to the local immigration office, the ICE office, then what? Yeah, we are, we are supposed to come back in uh, two weeks from now to show our passports, renewed passports, to be ready to self-remove our, our family back to Germany. Hannelore, are you watching this play out um, at, the, at the border of the United States where people, 500,000 Venezuelans, have already been given work permits without any any examination of their claims for asylum, no investigation of all, at all of their claims, yet they're being given temporary protective status. What do you think about that? Yeah, it is interesting. You know, we try to do it the right way, and uh, we don't get the right to stay here or to immigrate. And now for 15 years, we fight for that right. And it seems there are two faces <laughs> to this administration. Uva, do you think you're being discriminated against here because of your cultural views, your your religious outlook? Uh, obviously, you decided to homeschool your children because of concerns about government-run schools. Um, do you think there's a double standard here, at the very least? Of course, we don't know exactly the motivation they want to uh, leave, or want us to leave the country right now. Right now but uh, if that were the case, if they want us to be deported because of homeschooling. Uh, then there would be discrimination, and uh, that would be uh, a bad thing. America used to be a free country, and uh, people all from all over the world immigrated here to seek freedom, and we initially got freedom. We got uh, asylum granted by an, uh, a judge in Tennessee, and it was then the administration at that time, uh, 12 years ago, that uh, revoked it and, and, and turned it down. So we are, we are sad that that happened, but we hope and uh, believe that uh, there will be a change. It seems like your case, at least from everything I, un I understand about your case, and I read extensively about it, seems like it's the classic case of persecution for your you know, religious views. I mean, that is what asylum was designed for, for people like you. And yet people like you are being told, bye, essentially. Uh, there's something really rotten about this. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3, 1 Corinthians 12.26. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Matthew 5.10-12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. 
All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Dengue fever will become a major threat in the southern United States, southern Europe, and new parts of Africa this decade, the WHO's chief scientist has warned. Warmer temperatures are creating ideal conditions for mosquitoes carrying the infection to spread. The illness has long been a scourge in much of Asia and Latin America, causing an estimated 20,000 deaths each year. And rates of the disease have already risen eightfold globally since 2000. It's been driven in large part by climate change, as well as the increased movement of people and urbanization. Though many cases go unrecorded, 4.2 million cases of dengue fever were reported worldwide in 2022. And public health officials have warned that near record levels of transmission are expected this year. These images are from Bangladesh, which is currently experiencing its worst ever outbreak, with more than 1,000 deaths. World Health Organization infectious diseases specialist Jeremy Farrar told Reuters that some regions in the US, Southern Europe and Africa had reported some limited local transmission already. He called for better preparation of the impacted areas where the infection is likely to take off in order to avoid putting extreme pressure on health services. It's yet another deadly consequence of rising temperatures. Dengue fever is present in more and more regions around the globe and the World Health Organization is sounding the alarm. We need to really prepare countries for how they will deal with the additional pressure that will come in the future in many, many big cities. Do you know what the most important news story of our generation will be? What is the biggest event that will shake the entire earth within the lifetime of most of you? The second coming of Christ will be the most important event of this generation. If the King of Kings is returning soon to establish the kingdom of God upon this earth, you should be getting ready for it. The Lord Jesus foretold that there would be plagues or pestilences in various places in the last days before he returns, as we read in Luke 21:11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Satan is very busy in these last days trying to deceive the masses into believing climate change is causing everything that is wrong with the planet. In reality, it is God warning an unbelieving and unrepentant world that judgment is coming. These things are happening in various places around the world just as the Lord said they would. Time is over. Get ready. Jesus Christ is coming back. Zephaniah 2, 1 through 3. Gather yourselves together. Yes, gather together, O undesirable nation, before the decree is issued, or the day passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who have upheld his justice. Seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. In verse 3, where the prophet Zephaniah stated, it may be that you will be hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Many people believe this to be a reference to the rapture of the church. When the rapture occurs, the world will capture the moment. Cell phones, security cameras, law enforcement body cams, doorbell cams, and more will all bear video record of the great disappearance. The world will reel with concern from watching the strange, mind-boggling and unbelievable video footage that goes viral across the globe. People vanish before their eyes and all caught on camera. This event won't be science fiction, conspiracy theory, or mindless speculation. When Christ comes for his people, it will be in the twinkling of an eye. Between the resurrected dead and the rapture, billions of people will exit this planet in an instant. But billions will be left behind. It will be chaos on our globe, but incredible glorious joy in the skies. This is the rapture, the great disappearance. It is vital to know what the Bible says about this coming day. The next event on God's prophetic agenda for the earth. Are you ready? Luke 21, 36. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man.
major highways, bridges, and streets in India's northeast Sikkim state, all submerged in muddy water. Heavy rains caused a glacial lake to overflow, flooding several towns and villages in the mountainous region. Around 22,000 people have been affected, and 3,000 tourists are stranded. Authorities say rescue and recovery operations are underway. As of now, we have recovered 10 dead bodies. There are 82 missing persons which have been reported. Storms lashed Sikkim State on Tuesday and Wednesday, causing a dam to collapse. We thought the water level wouldn't rise as it was very low, but as the water was released from the dam, the level started to rise slowly. And after the dam burst, our houses were washed away. We had moved to a higher ground. All our houses are damaged. Continued rainfall is hampering rescue efforts, and the capital, Gangtok, is cut off due to major infrastructure damage. Weather forecasters are predicting more heavy rain for the rest of the week and have warned of possible landslides as thousands of people seek refuge from the relentless rain. Droids followed by floods, weather-related disasters are causing more and more children to be internally displaced each year, says the latest UNICEF report. According to its data, since 2017, more than 40 million children have been displaced due to climate disasters. UNICEF stresses that while the link between climate change and displacement is complex, it's clearer than ever that there is a correlation. Two major weather factors behind the displacement of children are storms and floods, which are increasing in frequency and intensity due to the climate crisis. If the situation doesn't improve, 100 million children could potentially be displaced in the next 30 years alone because of river floods, says the international organization. There are two key prophecies concerning Jesus' signs of his coming and the end of the age that are crucial to discerning that we are living in the last days. The first prophecy is found in Matthew 24:8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. The second prophecy is in Luke 21:28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Notice Jesus said when these things begin to happen. Jesus was saying that when you see a convergence of Bible prophecy, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. We are witnessing not only the convergence of Bible prophecy around the world, we are experiencing the frequency and intensity of these prophetic events as well. We turn now to the war in Ukraine and tonight the horrific scene unfolding there. Dozens of civilians killed in a Russian missile strike, including a six-year-old boy. Tonight, a horrific scene with bodies scattered on the ground in a village in northeastern Ukraine. A Russian missile killing more than 50 people, according to local officials. One of the deadliest attacks of the war. Many of the images too graphic to show. Russia targeting a memorial event for a dead Ukrainian soldier. But Ukraine saying all but one of the victims were civilians, including a six-year-old boy. Officials finding parts of a Russian Iskander missile at the scene we were shown the remnants of an Iskander from a previous attack. This is the part of the wing of the missile. And the lethal pieces of shrapnel packed inside. In Russia today, President Putin seeming to enjoy the division in the US over more military aid to Ukraine. If it stops, he says, Ukraine will die within a week. But at a summit with European leaders in Spain, Ukrainian President Zelensky also reacting to events in the US, saying Ukraine still has bipartisan support, even as more Republicans voice opposition to aid for Ukraine. Tonight, President Putin claiming Russia has successfully tested a new nuclear-powered and nuclear-capable missile with a range of several thousand miles. Russian President, President Vladimir Putin sending a chilling message to the people of Ukraine. Without aid from the West, and from the U.S. specifically, their days are numbered. He said it yesterday. Speaking yesterday in Sochi, Putin slammed the billions of dollars in Western donations to Kyiv, but he added, quote, if one just stops it will if one just stops it will all die in a week the same applies to the defense system just imagine the aid stops tomorrow it will live for only a week when they run out of ammunition here to react fox news strategic analyst retired four-star general jack Keane. general he's not wrong am i right 
the Ukrainians wouldn't have the success they have today without U.S.-led coalition support. I mean, that's a fact. If we pulled the plug on that, Putin eventually wins. That's, that's the reality of what we're dealing with. China wins as a result of that. China would look at the world and say the United States and NATO took a knee. It's going to be incentive for him also to be aggressive over Taiwan, something that he said he's committed to. He's, Putin, we didn't pay attention to him when he said Ukraine was the centerpiece of my expansion into Europe, and we dismissed it, and look what he did. He ac executed that mission. President Xi has been talking for six years now, out of the ten he's been in power, that he will use force, if necessary, to, ta to reunify Taiwan, his words. I think we should take that seriously. And he's in a strategic partnership with Russia. They're each helping each other. Can you imagine this, Brian? If Putin takes Ukraine, begins to expand into Europe. That would bring the United States in as a result of our commitment to NATO. President Xi takes Taiwan, and we're back in a situation we haven't seen since World War II. You know I'm not an alarmist, but you've got to look at what is really taking place here. Both of these countries are joined at the hip, and Iran and North Korea are enabling them. This is, this is the most significant strategic threat the United States has faced since World War II. The president and his team doesn't do a good enough job, in my view, in articulating right. this to the American people, how dangerous this is and what our strategy should be to cope with these realities. Putin has got to be stopped, and President Xi has got to be deterred. He's got to get the message that taking Taiwan by force and leading to a major world war. And now to the war in Ukraine and new information on how both sides are getting new weapons. A U.S. official tells CBS News that North Korea started sending artillery to Russia, while the Biden administration says the U.S. is sending Ukraine ammunition taken away from Iran. These two countries, North Korea and Iran, now being linked to Russia and Ukraine in their own ways are a reflection of concerns, even fears of a shortage of weapons and ammunition as this war nears day 600. With North Korea supporting Russia, this is the culmination of that rare summit we saw just last month. Kim Jong-un reportedly had hoped to sell artillery shells and anti-tank missiles. Russian President Vladimir Putin implied they had talked about military cooperation, and now we know this is confirmed. With the U.S. transferring Iranian ammunition here to Ukraine, we know that cash involves more than one million rounds used to power machine guns and Kalashnikov rifles. We also know the U.S. Navy seized those rounds last December. Iran was transferring them by ship to Yemen, which violated a U.N. embargo. Now, U.S. Central Command has confirmed it transferred those munitions here on Monday. With U.S. funding for this country frozen for now, Washington has found this workaround thanks to Tehran. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race, as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention. His return is near. The Syrian army has intensified its shelling in the country's rebel-controlled Idlib province. At least 10 civilians have been wounded in the towns of Al-Nairab and Sarmin, according to the White Helmets. The attack comes just hours after a drone strike on a crowded military graduation ceremony in the city of Homs, which left over 100 dead, including several children, and injured another 240 people. It was one of the deadliest recent attacks on Syria's army, which has been fighting a bloody civil war for more than a decade. No group has immediately claimed responsibility for the attack. Since Syria's civil war began in 2011, it has killed at least half a million people, wounded hundreds of thousands, and destroyed many parts of the country. This footage, released by the Turkish security forces, shows what it said were Kurdish militant targets in Syria, being destroyed one after another. Among the locations hit was this power station and, 30 kilometers east, this oil site. It was bombed by a warplane, and we came to extinguish it but they're not allowing us to do so. Every time we approach, they open fire at us. 
It comes after Sunday's attack outside the Turkish Interior Ministry in Ankara, claimed by the Kurdistan Workers' Party, or PKK. Ankara has since warned of retaliation against Kurdish fighters in northeastern Syria, alleging that the perpetrators came from Syria and were trained there. Turkey has regularly launched military operations against Kurdish militants along its borders with Syria and Iraq. We're always threatened by Erdogan, but we are not afraid because we're in our homeland. Now they're threatening to strike vital oil and fuel facilities. We are already struggling with shortages and people are worried about how to preserve these resources. When there is a threat to strike facilities as such, it will lead to shortages in the markets and fear among people. The Turkish strikes in the region have also led to tense engagements with its ally, the United States. The U.S. military said on Thursday it had shot down an armed Turkish drone carrying airstrikes against YPG Kurdish militants in northeastern Syria. YPG forces have been close allies to the U.S.-led coalition against the Islamic State group. Washington said the drone was operating within a kilometre of U.S. troops and deemed a threat. At a time when we've become used to pernicious remarks posted to social media, come some recent positive and uplifting words in college and professional football. First former NFL cornerback, now Colorado coach Deion Sanders. After Oregon's recent 42-6 blowout victory against the Buffaloes, Sanders posted a message to Instagram saying, quote, Lord, we thank you through it all. We praise you consistently because you deserve all the praise. We love you and magnify you, win or loss. We do that because with you, there is no loss. Amen. Dion's team may have suffered a temporary loss on the football field, but win or lose a football game, there's always eternal victory in Jesus Christ. Deion Sanders wasn't the only one praising God after the game. Oregon Duck quarterback Bo Nix, who had a stellar performance in that win, expressed his gratitude after quoting Psalm 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. On Instagram, Nix said, Jesus, thank you for these moments. Since high school and during his time at Auburn and now at Oregon, Nix has proclaimed his faith repeatedly on social media. He referenced Psalm 147, 4 through 5 in one post, saying, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. And finally, C.J. Stroud. How could this Michigan Wolverine forget him? On September 17th, the former Ohio State quarterback, now in the NFL with the Houston Texans, completed 30 of 47 passes for more than 380 yards against Indianapolis. Still, the Texans came up short, losing to the Colts 31-20. During a post-game press conference, Stroud said, pressure is a privilege. I'm blessed enough to wake up every day and to walk, to talk, and to smell, to, to enact with people, to play football. Like, these are all things we take for granted from day-to-day -day basis, but um, I try to do my best to thank God through all that because his grace and his mercy and his, and he laid his, his life on the, on the cross for us, man. Like, I really believe that, you know what I mean? So um, this is bigger than this ball. And if I have to use football for my purpose to, to spread the, the gospel and, and, and the life of Jesus Christ, then I'll do that. And I think that's what God wants. Folks, isn't it refreshing to see college and NFL athletes openly, unashamedly share their faith in public? Yes, we could use more public reminders of God and his love in our society today. Less violence, less hate. Psalm 136, 1 through 3. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. One of the benefits of praising God is bringing him into your life. When you thank and praise the Lord, you invite his glory and presence into your heart and soul. When your thanksgiving message reaches God, he can now reach down and bring light to your life with his mere presence. Psalm 1611, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, 
But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.